Hollywood Unlocked Uncensored. What up, everybody? This is Jason Lee, and this is Hollywood Unlocked Uncensored. And I'm Melissa Ford, a.k.a. The Curve Queen. It's DJ Damas. Let's get the show started. All right. Make sure you're listening to us on all streaming platforms, iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, iHeart, and make sure you're watching our recklessness on YouTube. Yes. That's right. Listen, thank you to everybody tuning in. I know that you are at work. I love, can I just say, first of all, to the fans of Hollywood Unlocked Uncensored, I know Melissa's just shouted you out on her Snapchat when she was being a little hood the other day. <laughs> but I have to tell you, man, I love going through airports, fucking grocery stores, but hotels everywhere i go and travel the fans always tell me how much they love the show how happy they are to see you back how much they love you yes. and how much you love our chemistry and i just wanted to take just a quick second to be nice and say from the bottom of my heart i really do appreciate everybody i love it i was in um neiman's the other day and this woman who had been walking behind me i was with friends and i started laughing and she came right up and looked me in my face and she was like i knew it was you i heard your laugh and she was just like we're glad to see, we're glad that you're back. And I was like, oh, I love you guys. I, I will tell you, you, you all don't understand that, you know, there are days, there are days we just have bad days. Everybody has a bad day. My bad day at work is just walking through life, okay? Because I work everywhere. Mm. So you never know when you come up to me and you say something kind, how much I appreciate it. And I really do, really do appreciate that all of you are supporting us, literally living out um, our dreams. I mean, all of us, have dreams that when I when I was young I wanted to be a police officer. That shit didn't work out. <laughs> <laughs> I did. No, I was a police cadet as a kid. Don't fucking laugh at that. There's police cadets out there. I was a police cadet. Um, I did. I did end up going to work at the group home that I graduated from, and then went to work as a probation officer. And the whole goal was to help kids because. I wanted to help children mm -hmm. because I was an at-risk kid. But then I realized that, you know, that whole legal system shit is just, it's a business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a big business. Mm -hmm. So I, it didn't work for me no more. And I saw how they were abusing kids. And so then I became a child advocate. And then I lost my job because I was fighting for them. And then ended up getting hired by the union. And then I started becoming an advocate. Mm -hmm. And then I, I just said, I had the courage to follow my dreams. But I do appreciate all the fans for allowing me to do that. Yes. That was a hell of a segue. Was it? It was long as fuck. Was it good though? Yeah, yeah. Like you, you eventually came to the point. But I got it. Yeah, you got it. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, you got it. All right. We so love you is the point. We're gonna hop into some hot topics because I know all of you want to ask us, what the fuck do you think about the fuckery in this world? So Melissa Ford, take it away. Well, let's start with something um, that I know that you can appreciate. Mm -hmm. um, Halle Berry turns around on the red carpet to speak to black media outlets. Yes. We love Halle Berry here on the show. Everybody on the planet, basically. Yeah. Who doesn't like Halle Berry? Nobody. I swear, there's sometimes where I think to myself, what would Halle Berry do? I do, I do. No, I, you don't. I promise I do that sometimes. Do you want to know why? Because in the face of a lot of bullshit, she's, been, she's always maintained so much composure and poise. Beautiful lady. So sweet. I just, I, I adore her. So anyways, um, she, while she was on the red carpet for the premiere of her movie, John Wick, Halle Berry made a choice to not skip over the black media outlets at the end of the carpet. I know you personally have a lot I'm to say let, about- I'm gonna let you say it. Okay. <laughs> Emer I'm gonna sit here and hold my peace. Let's okay. go. Emerald Marie took to Instagram to tell her of her, her experience on the carpet. She says in the video that she and another black media company were told that Halle had no time to speak to them, which is fucked up. Um, by Hallie's publicist after waiting on the carpet. She goes on to say that Hallie looked at her and told her publicist, no, I can't skip my brother and my sister. Here we go. Okay. She then turned around on the carpet and gave them an interview. Emerald continues saying how much it meant to her that Hallie would stop and acknowledge them. She also talks about how often black media outlets are overlooked. So Emerald was pro is probably a fan of yours and has heard you go on one of your many rants about sure. the fact that black media outlets are oftentimes overlooked on red carpet. And real quick, you know, another person that has done that for me personally, because mm -hmm. I've been on those carpets and I've been past, mm -hmm. Floyd has done that. Floyd has Come walked back. past and came back right. and gave me a few words when he didn't have to. So mm -hmm. it's dope to see stuff like that. Well, mm -hmm. let me tell you that, you know, back in the day when I when I first decided I was going to do Hollywood Unlocked, it was Queen Latifah who called and said, I thought about something, bro. I just ran into Perez Hilton and you remind me you could be Perez Hilton and TMZ with a heart. And I and that always sticks with me because she had a vision that was bigger than what I thought I could do. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, Perez is such a, uh, an icon in the blogosphere where he really started that blog shit. I mean, he mm -hmm. was the best at it. You know, as controversial as he was, he was the best at it. And then TMZ, of course, they're the number one source for pop culture on television at the time. Where they were, I don't know where they are now, but mm -hmm. whatever. So when I thought about that, I thought, okay, cool. 
what I didn't understand was I didn't understand racism in media. I didn't understand racism in raising money as a black person. Mm -hmm. You know, I wake up, I think I'm fucking brilliant. Mm -hmm. I think we all think we're brilliant in our own way mm -hmm. with what we're blessed with. We're all blessed with certain talents. There's one Melissa Ford. Mm -hmm. And I really feel like when Kanye had burnt himself out, talking about I'm a king, I'm a god, what he was really translating is I believe I'm great. And I think that most young black people don't, they're not raised being told you're great at mm -hmm. all there was never one day my family said to me you're great you're gonna be something you're gonna be you can be anything you want all i was told was you ain't gonna be shit like your daddy that's what i was told mm -hmm. so to grow up in that and then have life hand me a bunch of shit that i sorted out on my own and figured out to how to keep all of my own moral compass focused on being the best me and to become something mm -hmm. to get there and then be reminded you're still just a nigga because mm -hmm. perez was the one that said to me jason you want to blow up, get on that red carpet and ask them fucking questions when you get them. Mm -hmm. And I thought, okay. And then I started sending my staff out as I was building my company. And my staff would say, man, we got a fucked up place on the carpet, man. They put us way at the end, man. We didn't even get to see nobody, man. They just rushed them by because they were late. And mm -hmm. then I stood, stepped back from it and I started looking and paying attention. And we're in a chat room. I say, who did you interview at that? He'll send, Adam will send me a cut and I'll see we don't have no, we have B-roll of A-listers on the carpet mm -hmm. yeah. talking to entertainment tonight, mm -hmm. E! News, not talking to us. And I said this on The Breakfast Club. There are three major platforms online that people go to. Shade Room, Ball Alert, Hollywood Unlocked. There's other blogs out there, but they go to these three sources to find out what the fuck is, our people are doing and our people drive the culture. White people are not driving the culture. Indians ain't driving the fucking culture. Asians ain't driving the culture. Niggas is driving the culture. Mm. So... That is just the way it is. Now, what happens is it don't become popular culture until white people do what the black people are doing. Mm -hmm. And the problem is that now is that black people have bought into that bullshit. TV fucking one and NAACP, them old, them old house nigga companies who employ a culture where it's all about black on the outside, but it's really this inner burning desire to be accepted by the white man. That's the problem that I have started to pull the onion peel, the onion, the layers back, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. So I went on the Breakfast Club and I talked about it a little bit. People really, publicists, powerful. Beyonce's publicist called me. That's how big that motherfucking shit was. It was just me talking my fucking piece. Mm -hmm. Called me personally to say, I'm going to do what I could do behind the scenes to help you. Marcy Polanco called. I love Marcy. So many, you know. Yeah, of course. Powerful publicists. Mm -hmm. Historic people that I really was just saying what the fuck I see every yeah. day. Mm -hmm. But I didn't realize the impact of what we see every day on the red carpets was going to have on young journalists in college. Mm -hmm. Young black women who are just behind their computers typing as a hobby. Mm -hmm. People who are looking at me saying, you did it, I can do it. And I didn't even really think of them when I said it. So this girl you talked about, Emerald. I reached out to her today mm -hmm. from yeah. the plane. Yeah. And... Uh, I'm going on the Wendy show on Monday and I invited her to come with me. Oh, that's awesome. And I said to her, and she said to me, I was inspired by what you said on The Breakfast Club to address it. Mm -hmm. And the way she put it together was articulated so perfectly. And Halle Berry, I have to say, you probably may never hear this. If you do, great. If you don't, whatever. If somebody sees this, you know Halle, please send it to her. The fact that you stopped yep. and came back and that, and that God allowed to line everything up to capture it you don't realize that racism shows up in different ways. Mm -hmm. When you were back in the 60s, our parents, our grandparents, couldn't go into a restaurant through a certain door. You couldn't sit at certain tables. You couldn't drink at certain fountains. You were treated less than dogs. Dogs could sit at the head of the table, but you had to sit in another room. Mm -hmm. The carpet now was the new table. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's why I've said to people, I don't need your fucking table. I, I just signed with ICM, biggest, one of the biggest agencies in the world. And you know what I said to them? You're not gonna handle my business for me. I built my own table when I couldn't find a seat at one and now you can sit at my table. This is what I don't understand is how more of us in powerful positions have not yet checked motherfuckers. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm gonna check the NAACP. That's why I'm gonna check, when Nipsey died, NAACP didn't post shit on their fucking Instagram. Y'all niggas to me are culture vultures now. So when I look at the red carpet, white media is at the front. So you'll see E, Entertainment News, mm. all that shit. The shit that all of us niggas now who are tap dancing for these motherfuckers. Mm. Can't wait to get to the carpet and stop and spend 30 minutes talking to these sons of bitches who nobody cares about. Then the motherfuckers at the end that you run by mm. or that your little white publicist just runs you by 
with all our little black microphones sitting out there, with all the black people behind it, waiting to hear what the fuck you got to say, you don't even have no time for them. That yeah. shit would drive. If I was on a carpet, I would say, bitch, you see me standing here? <laughs> you would. Bitch, I don't give a fuck who you are. You ain't nothing but a hair, makeup, and a good rented dress, bitch. Get your ass <laughs> back the fuck here. Bitch, if you don't come and I'm, I'm going to go out. <laughs> Bitch, you gonna, don't got the keys, bitch. You gonna but, get the keys. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that this wasn't Hallie's publicist. That this was probably the publicist for the event, or for maybe the, even or for the film, or yeah, a studio yeah. publicist or whatever the That's case is. is. Just the fact that, and just the assumption that she thought that she knew what Halle Berry would want to do. She Halle Berry, in a very classy, composed way, checked her, but which is, I love. But this is what they do, and you've been there. And I'm gonna tell you something. And I said this to Damage when I Damage ain't never said that he don't never put me on blast because I have my own insecurities in what I do. Mm. When I first started Hollywood Unlocked, I could not do this without drinking. I could not fucking mm. no. I could do the show without drinking because she was here. Mm. If she's not here, but we did used to drink. But I mean, I then we, we can do stop. But I'm saying <laughs> the chemistry's natural yeah. because we have history, yeah. right? Yeah. I could not do a photo shoot without being drunk. I could not do a one-on-one -on -one interview with my team. It's only me, a camera, and two of my people. Mm. I could not do it without being drunk. And because I had a lot of insecurities, I didn't feel like I was good enough. When young black men and women are on that carpet, they got dressed to come down there to do what they're passionate about, to talk to the people that make them feel something, inspired or motivated or driven or that they look up to. They are fucking sitting there to give yo bitch ass some fucking shine. They, they, they're putting you out there to the people that actually want to hear about you. They don't fucking want to be your best friend necessarily. They want to help you shine and you just allow your publicist. See, because what they do is, I watched what that little bitch did. They hold the security, not Hallie, yeah. the publicist. Oh, the publicist, yeah. They hold the celebrities or get them there late to yeah. rush them through shit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You got time to stop and say hello. Mm-hmm. You in the fucking movie. You don't yeah. need to see what you did. You sucked his dick. You fucked him. You paid for the bills. You <laughs> bought groceries, bitch. You died at the end. That's the movie. Oh but you can sit there for a minute and say, thank you for coming. <coughs> when I hit a press line, I hit every fucking outlet. I don't care who it is. Yeah. And I pay attention to the white ones that don't want to talk to me right now. Y'all going to want to talk to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. People don't understand what Hallie did was so amazing because as big as she is and as eloquently as she did, she highlighted the fact that there, there's a place for niggas on the carpet and there's a place for white people. Mm -hmm. And the bigger part of this conversation is we have condoned it. Black people will hit that carpet and walk right past you, yeah. not even look you in the they fucking won't even face. You ain't never lied. They won't me, and you, me and you have two totally different personalities. You're a, a tad bit more aggressive than I am. Just a little yeah, just, bit. Just a little bit. Um, I always hated doing red carpet interviews, like being on the on the press side of the line because of the fact that with the bigger outlets they i would see stars black stars that would pass me by oh yeah you know based on who i was representing and then go for et or extra or whatever the case was and i was like i'm just not aggressive and i actually don't care enough about you honestly to try and get this interview so i probably should not be on the press line because i'm not gonna beg your motherfucking ass for a fucking interview because you shouldn't be passing me by we're we're basically if you think that we're not the same then there's a problem and i want to know nothing about you that it's kind of like the whole don't ever meet your idols kind of thing because they will probably disappoint you so the press line just turned out to be a place that i just i could not function for the for I the don't like it either. yeah for the I for exactly it. the reason that you're talking yeah. about when you would see stars that are not even on Hallie's level think that oh they've gotten to a level in which they don't really have to identify with this let me w go over to the bigger outlets no, quote, no unquote, the worst white. part is when you got a, a new talent and the, their publicist coming they'd be like who are you with yeah. oh, okay no 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 and they saying no to your face before the person even comes and then you see the person <laughs> walk by and it's not a lot of us of color standing on the other side of that rope and they really look at you and walk by and it's like wait you don't have two seconds to do a drop for our outlet that's going to really promote you clearly we want you and you're going to walk by us like and this is the insecurity that i say that yeah you know, when damage first started when damage first started i said to him i think you are so good at 
hosting and doing that and i need to be better at that mm -hmm. and he was like nah you good you good you good i'm like no i'm not and it's and maybe i am but it's the confidence yeah and it's also the being able to keep my shit togetherness mm -hmm. because the minute i feel like you're not giving me the respect because i'm not subservient to you this is now i have now realized what i bring to the table i now realize the influence i have because I've done stories that I've seen just go all over the world. Mm -hmm. And I've seen Vogue and Vanity Fair and all those people that they're looking for publish it. And this is why it's so important for me whenever somebody says, you're a blogger. Mm -hmm. I ain't no blogger. I own an entertainment media company. Mm -hmm. You can say, you, now I'm a CEO. Wendy, they asked me what my title was. CEO, not editor in chief, not host, CEO of Hollywood Unlocked, boss man, whatever you want to call me. Because... It's so easy to say urban blogs. I write about world news. I write about elections. I write about uh, people killing people. I write about rapes. I write about child molesters. I write about entertainment. I write about pop culture. But more importantly to the black celebrity listening, these, these outlets that you think are there to get you because you've somehow made it. Nah, nigga, they are not there every single day of your career. Mm -hmm. Hollywood Unlocked writes about Omari Hardwick way more than The Hollywood Reporter does. Mm -hmm. But he ain't never did an interview with us. Mm. You know what I'm gonna start doing? This is what I said on my Instagram today. I said, listen, I said, you're not safe anymore. You're not safe. Adam's gonna go back and pull footage. He told me on the plane, I got footage of these people walking by us. I said, I want a <laughs> oh, fucking fuck. real. <laughs> I, said, I said, I want a fucking real because what I'm gonna start doing is I'm gonna start putting y'all bitch asses on blast because here's the deal. <laughs> I don't own none of these people. We own none of them nothing. If you don't respect Hollywood Unlocked, if you don't come by Hollywood Unlocked, if you don't stop by, if you don't follow us, comment, be in our pet comments, Samuel Jackson follows Hollywood Unlocked. I just saw Anthony Anderson follows Hollywood Unlocked. Mm -hmm. But you guys have made it okay. You guys have built a comfort zone for these people to treat us like this. And, and it stops here with us. So then I, then I told Adam the next major carpet, I'm going. I'm not going to interview. I'm going to watch. And I'm telling you, sure. if anybody walks by my people or shits on my people, I don't give a fuck who you are. I don't oh, give a fuck Lord have who mercy. invited us. I'm going postal. Can you on do me Instagram. A, can you do me a favor? <laughs> on Instagram. No, I no, Listen, I, you know I'll pull up I will pull up in somebody's can face. Can you do me a favor? Yeah. Just wear like a GoPro or something, like a body cam. Just let, let me <laughs> No. I have to fucking this see this shit. I've, I've, de I've decided what I'm gonna do. I'm going to have a mic <clears> here. <throat> and a mic of my own and my own camera person. Just get a lavalier microphone. That's basically like the headpiece with the, no, you know? No, I'm getting a mic here so you always hear me. <laughs> and I'm gonna have my own handheld and my own camera guy. And when they walk by, I'm gonna jump right in front of their ass. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> Did you not hear him say, get over here for it? Get your ass back up. I'm going to start shaming them because I'm about to start unlocking this bullshit. That's never happened before. Here's the deal. I don't work for nobody but Jesus. Okay. I don't work for nobody but Jesus. Okay. Like I said, Jason has a lot to say on this particular subject, but um, we've got to get to other topics. No, because, because people have to understand. There are people, I never really knew the impact that this story and this experience had on young people. Mm -hmm. No, for it's real. Not, it's not the- It's serious. You know how the powerful publicists that call me afraid to publicly comment on the post, but were so elated, like, I cannot believe you had the curse. What you mean you can't believe? I own this shit. Mm. And I'm going to keep doing it. So I'm just telling you, TV One, BET, all of us that own our shit, now, now I'm being asked to vote on, I've been, I've been asked to vote on BET award nominations. I'm, I'm in there now mm. because, see, now I'm not playing no more. Now I'm going to just continue to just demonstrate that if you just have a little bit of courage and stick up for yourself, and you have a little bit of courage to stick up for what you believe is right, like black people being treated equally when it comes to reporting on our own people, the world would be a better place. Okay. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, I sent a story that I noticed on Twitter to um, our producer, and uh, this one really pissed me off. You know, I really find it an annoying. Let me just read the headline, and then I'll get into it. Mm -hmm. um, a D.C. author shamed a Metro worker for eating on a train. Now her book deal is in jeopardy. No, it's not in jeopardy. They dropped her motherfucking ass, okay? So we break this down? Okay. So author Natasha Tynes, who has either taken off her Twitter, like, you know, uh, disabled her Twitter account is disabled good um, 
she ignited a firestorm on social media where she criticized a black Metro employee for eating on the train and reported the woman to transit officials. She literally, no, she took a picture and took a video of this woman eating on the train, not knowing her circumstances as to why she couldn't finish her meal or start her meal wherever. She just decided to invade this woman's privacy, take video of it, send the video to DC transportation, Metro transportation Mm -hmm. to basically complain about the, what the woman was doing. Um, so the tweet read, uh, Tynes tag WMATA account reporting that when she confronted the woman for breaking the Metro rules and woman replied, worry about yourself. Well, you should have, um, when you're on your morning commute and see at WMATA employee in uniform eating on the train, Tynes tweeted, I thought we were not allowed to eat on the train. This is unacceptable. Hope at WMATA responds. Oh, snitch. The back the backlash was swift. Twitter <laughs> justice, okay? Um, some people decried Tyne's tweet as racist, calling out the self-described minority writer for shaming a black woman and potentially get, getting her in trouble. In response to the tweet, transit officials asked her- Wait, so it was a white woman? No, hold on, I'm getting to that. Okay. I'm getting to that. Um, in response to the tweet, transit officials asked her for more information and thanked her for catching this and helping us make sure all Metro employees are held accountable. Okay, f- epic fail on your part. Um, WMATA, epic motherfucking fail. Why though? I don't think employees should be eating. So hold on, just hold on a second. Okay. You don't know this woman's life? Um, I know from eight to five what it is. It's on the metro. But you don't know. You don't <laughs> know. God. You don't know if she was. She might have been on. Okay, she might have been in uniform, and she might have been going to her post, taking the train to her post. She might not and be working. Eat. No, she does not know her life. So why are you intruding on it? Okay, you know what I'm saying? I will say that. I have a problem when I come to uh, give praise to a certain establishment, that's my coinage, Mm -hmm. and the employees are fucking off on the job. Now, I'm not saying this is this woman's situation because I don't know if we, do any of us know what was happening with the girl? That's the thing is no one knows the circumstances if the woman was on the train going to her post or she wasn't sitting in a conductor's booth eating. Well, I think it's different. If she's just sitting on the train and we don't know what's happening, that's one thing. If I come to your job and you're sitting up like I, the other day I was somewhere in mm-hmm. Atlanta and a few people were sitting having a side conversation mm-hmm. when I came to have dinner mm-hmm. and I just stood there for a minute and they kept talking. I said, excuse me, can I can somebody seat me right now? Somebody would have thought like, I was being rude. No, that's annoying. Like, I understand okay. what you're talking about okay. there. You know, if like, you know, you walk into an establishment, you're waiting to be seated. And, you know, the hostess or hostesses are talking about the fuck shit they were into last night. That's a different story. But she literally took time out of her day. This is where she took a fail. Yeah. She literally took time out of her day to notice what another person was doing who wasn't bothering her, that she didn't need a service provided to her by and took a picture of Was the woman of her. white? What, what was no, she? No, okay. So here's the thing. This is the thing that bothers me about women who embrace the women of color, people of color label. What was she? Uh, she was like, a, uh, was that? Jordanian. 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 Okay. So excuse me if I you know, offended anybody there. But um, so just the fact I get I get really irritated when women embrace the whole women of color, person of color, minority label to serve them, serve a purpose, like to sell books or whatever the case is. But when they are in a situation where they're, you know, where there's another person of color, they have an elitist kind of attitude because I'm like, oh, yeah, because yeah, they're literally like, well, you a nigga. They move like that. That's how they move. They move in a certain kind of hierarchy. If she thinks somebody is working, I don't think it was beyond somebody like her to sit there and take her phone out and try to tell on her because that's kind of like how they move. <sighs> okay. Unfortunately. Well, in response to the incident, Rare Bird Books, a publishing house that was set to distribute Tynes' upcoming novel called They Call Me Wyatt, has decided not to do so. We don't have what they really wrote, but it was epic. All you got to do is just search Rare Bird Tweet and you're going to see it because it just was it was it was awesome. That's what you get for being a snitch. I mean, for no poss- for no reason. Like, why a would you- people snitch for no reason? Exactly. The situation was very reminiscent of um, Permit Patty, um, the chick that was trying to rat out a freaking eight-year-old who was well, selling well, water. Because I'm going to tell you why people sunscreen. do this. I'm going to tell you why people do this. Because y'all motherfuckers don't be whooping their ass. <laughs> Back in the day, I will never forget my... A black person whipping a white person's ass in the street is probably not going to go over really well. She's okay. not white, day and eight. Okay, listen, no, listen, just, listen, listen. In any listen. circumstance. We're not going to make ass whoopings about race. 
Yeah, you that's fuck not good. up, you get in my business, you get your ass whooped. Back in my day, I rem- I remember my apartment manager. I remember to the day she dead now. But anyway, she went to go get this black girl. She went to go, she grabbed this little black girl because she wanted to tell her about herself. And she's a white woman. She's like, you better stop. And you blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. I will never forget that black girl's mama coming out the house, pulling her stockings off because she was coming to <laughs> whoop her ass. She beat her ass so bad. I had to go run and get the white woman's husband to take her to the doctor because she yeah. thought she was having a heart attack. We need to go back to that. I feel like if you fucking around, <laughs> Don't be in shit that don't got nothing to do with you. Now, Hollywood Unlocked is exempt because we have to write the news. Right. <laughs> what the fuck? Right. You'd be like, you're the problem. I- <laughs> you're the fucking problem. <laughs> Everything that comes out your mouth has nothing to do with it. Well, guess what? Everything that comes out and goes in has to do with me. <clears throat> I don't think that. I missed that fucking. Okay, joke. no, we totally got it, Jason. I, I promise well, you, you, we act got like it. it. <laughs> can we get a fake <laughs> laugh? <laughs> Let's get a fake <laughs> laugh. <laughs> Okay. Well, no, anyways, no, we need a fake laugh. I did one. Do just, a better one. Okay. I listen, uh-huh. okay, motherfucker. Like a you fake don't snap laugh. your fingers and I just start dancing. Well, that's why you're single. I did. Okay. Anyways. All right, y'all. It's time for another Hollywood hookup. Let's just be real right now. No one has time to go to the post office. There's traffic going to the post office. There's traffic in the post office. And I don't know about you, but I get anxiety at the post office. And if you're like me, I do too. I get I get a lot of anxiety, and I always ask stupid questions, and they're always looking at me like, "Why are you here?" So I have a solution for you. If you're like me, it's called Stamps.com. Okay, so it's one of the most time-saving tools for small businesses. Stamps.com eliminates trips to the post office and saves you money and discounts that you can't even get at the post office. I love discounts. So this is how it works. Stamps.com brings all the amazing services of the U.S. post office right to your computer. Whether you're a small office sending invoices, you know, I sent a couple invoices of mm-hmm. DJ, mm-hmm. Uh, online sellers shipping out products, doesn't matter. Even if you're a warehouse sending out thousands of packages a day, Stamps.com can handle it all with ease. That's awesome. So check it out. With Stamps.com, you get five cents off your first class stamp up to 40% off priority mail. Yeah, I said it weird because I can't usually afford priority mail, but now <laughs> I'm telling you, now I can with stamps.com. That's awesome. Not to mention it's a fraction of the cost of those expensive uh, postage meters. You know, when they like mm-hmm. you're trying to send them and they do the thing. Yep, the I thing. Yeah. It's the, the thing. I barely here. know either. That's why I'm using stamps.com. Mm-hmm. Long story short, stamps.com is a no brainer, saving you time and money. Money's very important. And no wonder why over 700,000 small businesses already use stamps.com. I do. So check this out. Right now, our listeners get a special offer that includes a four-week trial plus free packages in a digital scale. That's right, a digital scale without any long-term commitment. That's amazing. Just go to stamps.com, click on the microphone at the top of the homepage, and type in unlocked. Unlocked, people. That's stamps.com, type in unlocked. Your boy Safari was uh, <laughs> protesting the fur ban in New York City. Doing a counter protest? Uh, yeah, yeah, he was. So Safari Samuels took to the fur ban protest, marching and screaming for his right to wear luxurious furs. Oh, Safari rocking a flowing fur coat, of course, was shouting at the top of his lungs in front of New York City, uh, New York City Hall to protest a proposed ban on fur sales. Things got very heated with Safari's pro-fur supporters clashing verbally with a slew of anti-fur protesters. He marched and shouted, leave us alone. Stop picking on us. Our fur, our right, our choice, our right. Well, I don't understand. I don't understand why. First of all, I don't understand PETA. And I don't understand people that don't like people that wear furs. Because why are y'all not standing in front of Chipotle? Mm. Because there's animal meat in there. Like, why wouldn't you fucking be mad? (laughs) Why are you not at the McDonald's posted up? You don't. Humans don't need meat to (laughs) survive. So So why not stand in front of Chipotle (laughs) or McDonald's? I'm not not standing in front of any of the motherfuckers. It's all gross to me. I'm saying. I will say this, that when it comes to fur um, and when it comes to the consumption of meat, usually meat that is meant for consumption is you know, killed in a humane manner. I know somebody's gonna oh, come get on oh, me about oh, that. Yeah? Oh my God. Let's not do it. Let's let's stop doing drive bys and let's just fucking put in like let's just put, let's just poison people. Let's just poison them. <laughs> <laughs> they die in their sleep, and that's a nicer way of killing them. The two things can be seen as hypocritical. 
It's super hypocritical. Uh, yeah, a, a, non, but, a non-fur-wearing person who eats meat. You're, yeah, you absolutely have a leg to stand on. I don't even want to dip my toe into this motherfucking... You don't want to... I don't want to do it. I don't I don't know do why it. Safari did it. I mean, I get it, bro. I mean, Peter, those people are annoying. They pop up on you. They surprise you. They throw paint on you. They do but, it to the right people. You throw paint on the wrong <laughs> motherfucker, you're going to get caught with a they, right. They tried it with Gucci, man. It didn't go so well. But... Safari trying to do a, a, a counter protest. It's like, bruh, just wear your fur and go the fuck in. Like, what's the point of going out there and standing out there in your Timberland boots because, with your fur on I trying talk, to fight the power? Like, I, what's talked the- to, I talked to Safari. He told me he was going to do this. But look, I love the... F- Safari knows how to keep his name in oh, people's mouth. Oh, it's a clout mouth. chase? Mm-hmm. No, it's not a clout chase. It's just a, he, he knows he's going to go do it. He knows uh, he's going to go viral. I wouldn't say it's a clout chase. <clears throat> There's a lot of motherfuckers out here that are irrelevant that need to figure out a clout chase. But anyway, I feel like if you're going to protect animals... Mm-hmm. Why don't you protect them all the way around? Chipotle should be shut down. Chick fil A. Chick fil A. These fucking PETA niggas go to Chick fil A like it ain't shit. Go to the fucking farm. Chick fil A hates gay people on top of that. Okay, I would probably. I don't understand. I, I, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that PETA would not accept, you know, uh, volunteers or, you know, people to into the establishment if they weren't vegan. So are all PETA people vegan? I mean, no. they might be sneaking on the side. They're animal you know? lovers that have like their dogs and their little cats and they don't like when people wear them. And then they got to be virgins too. What? Yeah. They can't be getting all that meat. Okay. <laughs> all right. You guys want to talk about abortion? Because everybody else is. Fine with me. Let's okay. go. Yeah, let's go with it. Lord, here we go. Um, Alabama's state Senate made the shocking move to approve a near total ban on abortions in the state. The controversial law outlaws all abortions except in cases where a woman's health is at serious risk. It also stated that there are no exceptions, even for cases of rape and incest. Crazy. The Alabama law will make abortion a felony at any stage of a woman's pregnancy. It will also criminalize the procedure for doctors who could face up to 99 years in prison if convicted. Although Alabama is the latest conservative state to pass a law aimed at limiting abortions, this is the most restrictive in the United States. Following the big move, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi tweeted, women's rights are under attack. This relentless and cruel Republican assault on women's health is designed to force a court battle to destroy Roe versus Wade. Democrats will all will be ready to defend health care and women's reproductive freedom. Georgia Governor Brian Kemp signed a bill that would ban abortions if a fetal heartbeat can be detected. Which is like... At about five weeks, right? Six. Six. Um, this usually happens between five to six weeks of a woman's pregnancy before many women even know that they're pregnant. As of right now in Georgia, women are allowed to undergo abortion procedures up to their 20th week of pregnancy. However, starting January 1st, the bill signed by Kemp would ban abortions after a fetal heartbeat is detected. Kemp said while signing the bill, Georgia is a state that values life. We protect the innocent. We champion the vulnerable. We stand up and speak for those that are unable to speak for themselves. Well, we posted something today as a Throwback Thursday uh, post, just in case people forget about the Republican Party. So uh, Republican uh, uh, Senator Clayton Williams said on rape, he was they were these were all people that were talking rape. Rape is kind of like the weather. It, it If it's inevitable, relax and enjoy it. He's from this Texas. Is, yeah. Another one, Todd Aiken uh, from, uh, it looks like, what is MO? Is that Missouri? I don't know, wherever MO yeah, is. Yeah, it's Missouri. Is that Missouri? Yeah. He says, if it's a legitimate rape, the female body has ways to shut that thing down. What? Okay, Rick Santorum of, of Pennsylvania says, rape victims should make the best out of a bad situation. Richard Murdoch from uh, Indiana says, even when life begins in that horrible situation of rape, that is something that God intended to happen. And then a woman, uh, Jody uh, Laudenberg, wait, Laudenberg from Texas says, in the emergency room, they have what's called rape kits where a woman can get cleaned out. Get cleaned And then Lawrence Lockman of uh, Maine, maybe, says, if a woman has the right to an abortion, why shouldn't a man be free to use his superior strength to force himself on a woman? At least the rapist pursuit of sexual freedom doesn't in most cases result in anyone's death. Did a, wo- a woman said that? No, the woman said, said that. The woman oh. said the and one so, before And that. so for those of you who are Rick not it. thinking about 2020 right now, please just refer back to this clip and go out and register to vote. Please. And do whatever you can to make sure that the motherfuckers that are actually legislating your body, women, don't have the power to do so. Stand up. You know what's crazy is women's uh, bodies are the only women are the only people in our country who law there are laws 
or even a debate over man. laws on how to govern the do. body. Yeah. I don't think one man should have anything to do with whatever a woman wants to do with her body. You want to know what I think? I think a lot on this subject. And I'm very, I'm really, 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 really disturbed and really, really angry. Handmaid's Tale was one of my favorite shows first season. Mm. I didn't even bother watching second season. Why? Because it was starting to imitate life a little bit too motherfucking much. And there's all these protests that are happening where women are dressing like, you know, the, the red cloaks and the white hats from Handmaid's Tale because it's reminiscent of of, of the storyline of the show. And what frightens me, I, I don't even know where to start, the whole rape and incest thing. Okay, let, like, let's just take this, you know, where it says, the controversial law outlaws all abortions except in cases where a woman's health is at serious risk. Let's talk about a woman's health. From what standpoint? Physical health? Mental health? Because think about what that, what that would do to a woman. Forcing a woman who, or, or a young girl, 14, 15 years old, who mm -hmm. gets pregnant because her uncle decided to, rape, you know, exactly. commit incest against her. Or a woman that has gone through the traumatic experience of being held against her will, violently assaulted, a mm -hmm. penis shoved in her that she never fucking wanted, and then she gets pregnant. Yeah. And then people are going to decide what happens with the conception of this violent act what do you think that that's going to do to that woman's state of mind? Does she know? What the fuck are we? Portals? Like literally hosts? What? I'm, I can't. Well, I'm surprised. This is a state where people are probably fucking their cousins. So, I mean, I'm sure that if you have people in the South who are fucking their cousins, their own cousins and getting pregnant. Let me. Wouldn't you want that person to be able to have an abortion if they choose to? Yeah. I mean, again, I'm not saying this is a joke. I'm saying because we know we've when we've all seen Jerry Springer and we know people in different communities who are in relationships with their family members. And I'm, I've heard that if you have a relationship with your cousin, have a baby, does, doesn't the baby come out mentally mentally uh, the, ill? Right? Um, yeah, like the when you Down syndrome. Yeah, um, is that a rule? Is that true? That's what I've heard. Basically, what starts to happen is chromosomal breakdown when you when you start to have babies, you know, with people who are in the same genetic, you know, mm -hmm. line as you. Listen to this, you know, uh, the this uh, comment that was in one of my, um, you know, on my Instagram page. This real, this is just in line with the way that certain men think. The men that have made these fucking laws. Um, I posted a picture, you know, and I, I don't know, I'm in a fucking bathing suit. I don't know. And it, it's, God, it's so fucking offensive. You know, I'm uh, Melissa Ford in a fucking bathing suit. Why are you cussing so much? Relax. Because I'm really, really angry. It's an angry subject. I'm really angry for, because of the fact that there's going to be women and young girls in desperate situations yeah. that are going to have to find, you know, illegal, now illegal means mm -hmm. in order to, um, get rid of unwanted pregnancies because shit happens. Mistakes mm -hmm. get made or you get raped or fucking diddled by an uncle and it was not your choice. So you're going to be per pursuing like, you know, getting back alley fucking abortions yeah, it's a woman with fucking that, it's, coat hangers shoved up your... Like, but I, it's I, a I woman that came up with this bill too. I'm, I, I, she's What's a, the age she's of a, all those people that was She's a fucking gender traitor. Fuck? Yes, I have a picture of oh, all of them. Man. So if they end up... Anyways... Let me just read what this person said on my page. It's not about that, talking about beauty or something like that. It's about if you're able to procreate. A woman's greatest uh -huh. value is in if she's able to build a family and procreate. Looks come in second and always fade. At Kron23, K-E-Y-R-O-N-2-3. You up. can motherfucking unfollow me. And this was my response. Wow, if women didn't have enough men telling us how our bodies should be used. Crazy how judgmental you are not knowing anything about me in a personal manner. What if I'm not able to have children? Then what? Is my life a waste according to you? You can just unfollow me, blah, blah, blah. But it's just like the whole assumption that a woman's entire usefulness is just to give birth to life, that we can't have any kind of, you know, sustainable, like it, the fact that we're not seen as useful or, or, or needed or whatever the case is, if we don't have a baby. But that goes back. Our to, whole existence is a that waste. That goes back to what I said in the other show. And I think that is in the whole Halle Berry thing. I think people listen to the stuff that comes out of my mouth because I do say a lot of crazy fuck shit at times. But there are times that I really be speaking real shit. Mm -hmm. Women's lives don't matter as much. And oh. it's not that I believe that. Mm -hmm. The I world. It's really fucked up. The world Because believes everything that. you just said matters. But it's not going to matter enough until a man says it. 
And you know what's sad is that that woman in Alabama mm. who wrote this fucking, who signed this fucking bill. No, that's the thing is it has not, it hasn't been signed by the well, governor just woman, yet. But that, who was the, the woman? The bill has gone through the Senate and now it's got, it's literally sitting on the governor's desk. And is the governor a woman? The governor is a woman. Okay. She's going to sign it. Let me tell you something. Crazy. But the crazy part is that what women don't realize is women are the most powerful species in this world. You, you, you give life. You give life. Mm -hmm. You're the you you what reproduces everything in this fucking world. Mm -hmm. I don't understand why women don't unite over something like this. Because see, women I feel like unite over women's issues more than black people do on black people's issues. Mm -hmm. I think. But I but when it comes to something like this, if you're in California or you're in New York or you're in Maine or you're in fucking Chicago and you're saying this ain't my issue, this is down in Alabama, fuck them country pumpkins. What you don't realize is Whenever the government gets a precedent anywhere, they start to try to replicate it everywhere. Yeah. No, that's obvious. That's and, what's happening. And so you look at even with like uh, the Patriot Act and being able to listen in on all our private conversations mm -hmm. and, you know, illustrating that this is to keep us safe and this and that. Mm -hmm. It just went on and on and on to the point to where we don't know if they're listening right now. Mm -hmm. So I feel like women have to understand that. We used to say this at the union. If it affects one of us, it affects all of us. Right. Absolutely. That's really true. There, no, there there is an enormous amount of women who are, you know, are, who are basically protesting the fact that these bills are popping up in conservative states. It's mm -hmm. Georgia. It's Alabama. It's Ohio. And it's spreading like a fucking virus. But the scariest thing is the gender traitors, you know, that are I'm like. This is what's going to happen. There's always a controversy whenever there is whenever a conservative precedent is set or a bill is like introduced into legislation. And what's going to happen is there's going to be some ultra super conservative senator whose side piece is going to get pregnant. Yeah. And the scandal is going to be that he finds a way to get her a secret abortion. I, mark it. my words, it's going to happen. And I am going to be sitting there with my motherfucking popcorn because it's just so hypocritical. Because let you guys be the ones who have to carry children. Oh, this would... It, it wouldn't even be, I, would be, I, would be a thing. I had a phone call. Abortion would be mandatory. I had a, <laughs> I had a phone call with Lyra Galore the other day who mm -hmm. just gave birth to a very beautiful baby. Mm -hmm. And she was telling me that she had to have an emergency C-section. Mm -hmm. And when she said she said her 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 man videotaped it, mm -hmm. and then she watched it back later, mm -hmm. where they cut her from side to side and basically pulled out her organs mm -hmm. to lay on top of her body. Yeah. What women have to go through when they choose to have childbirth mm -hmm. is something that I know I don't even have an ounce of courage to try to experience. Mm -hmm. Let alone a woman get pregnant, and let's be very clear, a woman has the right. To fuck whoever she wants, however she wants, whenever she wants, mm -hmm. wherever she wants. If she so happens to get pregnant, maybe she planned it. Mm -hmm. Maybe she loved him, so she wanted to have a baby to keep him. Or she wanted to have a baby because he wanted the baby. And then her parents are super religious and say, there's no way in hell you having that fucking baby. Mm -hmm. And then tell her she has to have an abortion. Mm -hmm. And then she feels like, okay, I'm going to have an abortion. Mm -hmm. She should have a right to have that abortion. Or she should have the right to say, I'm going to keep my baby. It's her it's body. It's nobody else's decision. <laughs> it's her it body. Ain't, it's between her and God. Because mm -hmm. if, if yeah. God don't want you to have that baby, that baby going to be gone. Mm -hmm. Between you and him. Now, your parents shouldn't matter. Your pastor shouldn't matter. Your, your nigga shouldn't matter. Your side nigga shouldn't matter. Your cousin that you fucking shouldn't matter. Nobody should matter. Mm -hmm. It should be your... But this is what people have to do. Same with black people. We got to stop getting mad and start doing something. Mm -hmm. Stand up. You have to stop getting mad and start doing something. You have a voice. Mm. You have this platform, but you also have relationships. Mm. I'm sure we can figure out a way to create a brunch to have a conversation. Create conversation. I'm, gonna, I, I'm definitely going to figure it out because this. Call, this, call Angela, Roxy, Angela Rye. Reach out to women in media and have some type this of is something, conversation. This, this is something that I saw it coming down the pipeline and it frightened the fuck out of me. It's not in my wheelhouse anymore, people. Like it, it's not even in. It's not something I need to be concerned about. I'm 42 years old. You know what I'm saying? So this isn't something that I need to be. Con I've had an IUD for God knows how long. It's this is Fort Knox here. You know what I'm saying? So it's not something that I personally need to be concerned about. I'm just scared for young girls and women who don't have anywhere to turn. Our future. You know, and they're and. 
rape and incest and this whole heartbeat bill considering a fetus a person it's not a fucking person at six weeks there's no brain formed you know what i'm saying there's no spinal column how do you call this person a foot then you know what every time you jack off you are committing motherfucking hot like genocide or something. well first of all i i think there's people that should be in prison if you've swallowed you've killed a whole community <laughs> oh i mean for real God. like if you've swallowed you have killed you an go entire to jail. Vi- you've killed an entire village so something I had, like that listen, I'm, I'm guilty as charged but anyway <laughs> oh no the bottom line is at the end of the day a woman should have a right to choose. But I will tell people who are listening, and this is coming from working 10 years in the union, leading strikes, taking down hospitals, fucking fighting um, bad worker agreements and, and safe working conditions for em- employees. Complaining never changes nothing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Complaining never changes anything. When I spoke on The Breakfast Club about racism on the red carpet, that was information. So there's 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 different ways of changing behavior. There's information, so mm-hmm. get it out, get it out, get it out. Make sure everybody knows, get it out. That's mailers, that's newsletters, that's conversations, that's platforms, that's social media, that's interviews. And then there's action. Like mm-hmm. let's have an event and fucking organize. Let's mm-hmm. let's have an event. Then there's then there's direct action. Let's go down and let's get. Uh, I know K- uh, Karen Bass is coming on our show, right? Well, mm-hmm. you know, let's get Karen Bass in here mm-hmm. and let's find out what's happening within the government because there are different levels. There's if you put the amount of people in this country on one side and you put the amount of people in our government at the leadership level, mm-hmm. House, Senate, yeah. uh, uh, judicial branch, mm-hmm. and the president, mm-hmm. we way we outnumber them. Mm-hmm. But in our minds, we've been conditioned to believe our government's going to take care of us. It's fucking crazy. Mm-hmm. Nobody ever, when I when I first got my job in the union working with Kaiser Permanente, I walked in there. There's all these white people around the table. When I was 25 years old, mm-hmm. I fucking had cornrows. <laughs> I had fucking Timberlands on. We saw you. <laughs> oh, I was, a, I was a straight nigga, right? <laughs> the, the icebreaker was... Let's go around the room and say our name, Mm -hmm. our age, Mm -hmm. where we graduated from college, Mm -hmm. what our role is. Mm -hmm. Oh, I I know that irritated the shit out of you. No, I didn't even realize what was happening Mm -hmm. until about the third person. Yeah. Because they started right here. It was meant to shame you. It was 50, president, Mm -hmm. uh, graduated from this school. And when it got to me, you know what I said? I said, I'm 25. I didn't finish college. I'm the uh, union rep for this area, mm-hmm. and I got just as much power as all of you because I represent your employees. Mm-hmm. I shut this bitch down. Mm-hmm. They couldn't handle it. Mm-hmm. We have to start taking back our power because when we come together, man, it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. The problem is the coming together part. Mm-hmm. You know, you look at what happened with Nipsey uh, Hustle dying. Mm-hmm monumental moment for something really really big to happen because i think we all and even t- yesterday i was saying i still feel that death because mm-hmm. it's just so fucking crazy to me and just so it does doesn't wrap our mind uh, my, i can't wrap my mind so around wasteful it. but we're all mm-hmm. waiting to find out what do we do now right what do we do now what do we do listen what- i'm gonna i'm gonna be honest this this particular um fight scares me it, with, with the women yeah, yeah. it I want to fight for women's rights, especially in this regard. You know what I'm saying? Because this is an attack on the disenfranchised and maligned communities. Women, un- you know, living just above the poverty level yep. and underneath it. This is this is classism at its fucking worst. You know what I'm saying? This is this is frightening. And the thing that scares me about this is the right wing conservative Christian faction mm-hmm. because they are fucking evil. They are mean and yeah, but and these- no no, they're mean and they're vicious and they do not they they won't they won't uh, uh compromise. N- not even compromise. They will not hesitate to threaten you with violence and death. Oh. You know what I'm saying? I don't I don't want that. I don't want that kind of negative negativity in my fucking realm. I ca- I can't handle it. You know, so it's just like so it literally is a inner conflict within me to think I want to fight for the rights of women. I want to fight for the rights of women who want to make, you know, decisions about their own body. But I'm terrified of some fucking lunatic trying to take me out because I'm defending mm-hmm. the defenseless and the voiceless. There were slaves who were afraid to try to be free. There, there, there's, the, there's, there's a Harriet Tubman. There are gay people who are afraid of uh, you know, equal rights. If you think about it, the disenfranchise isn't just women. It's women. It's 
anything that's in a protected class, mm-hmm. women, gay, people of color. Mm-hmm. But see, the problem again, I'm just going to say this because people listening, they, you're on your lunch break or you're at your job. You're just trying to get through the day. You thought we was going to say a bunch of fuck shit all day. It got real. And you're going to hang up. Uh, you're going to turn this off and then you're going to go right about your life. Because none of us have a sense of community anymore. Mm-hmm. And none of us, when I say community, black, women, gay, we don't have a sense of that no more because we're just trying to get through the day. We talk, mm-hmm. I talked about how I'm so consumed with my goals. that yeah. You know, I used to be a living, breathing, fighting union person. I mean, I remember coming to Southern California and they said, you have three months to take these three hospitals on strike. Mm-hmm. Day and night, all I was doing was organizing workers mm-hmm. and mentally agitating them to go and take their hospitals down. Right. So... Now that I'm not getting paid to do that anymore, I don't give as much as myself of myself to service, mm-hmm. which I will say part of my goal is finding two things that I can be personally involved with yeah. and use my platform. One has to be kids and the other I have to figure out because I do feel like God doesn't give you all of this. God doesn't give you all of this to not use it. Mm-hmm. And I will say complaining does nothing. Yeah. If you're informing people, it's one. But it's how do you as a woman Find a women's rights group that would love to use somebody like you that has a platform to tap into uh, putting their message out there. But then also, is there a gay uh, organization that has women in it, lesbians who are fighting for women's rights? Mm -hmm. Is there a black organization or a Latina organization? You find a way of building a coalition. If you just get one person that represents every agency or every organization around the table, those 10 people could be talking about to 10,000 and yeah. those 10,000 have a I family agree. of 10 of a hundred thousand. I, I agree. You got to make, you got to make it, 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 you know, the coalition that you create, it's got to be looking very much it like the United to. Nations. It you has know? to, it's got to be people. First. It because, to be everybody. because mm-hmm. it's old white privileged people who are not the mass, they're not the majority making these mm-hmm. decisions. Mm-hmm. But they're acting like the masses. Yeah. What if they said niggas can't vote no more? Massa. Niggas can't even ride in a bus no more. It's coming to that no, point. No, no. Because we have we don't have a sense of community. Mm-hmm. We don't have a sense of organizing. We don't have a sense of making this shit real. Somebody was talking about the ozone layer opening up and meteors popping out, and we ain't thinking about what we're gonna do to save the uh, the, the fucking climate control. The earth. I mean, that's a that's a whole that would definitely be a cause I, that I I'm would say, but there's environmental motherfucking terrorists that would come for my ass again. Listen, it's not about, <laughs> listen, standing up for what you believe is not about fe- the fear of consequence because the fear of con- the, the fear of consequence for not standing up is greater than that. I mm-hmm. agree. A motherfucker running up on you. I remember S- Sunset Medical Center, Kaiser, I come down here. The first day, my boss says, don't say nothing to these people because they are not happy that you're here. I said, well, okay, I won't say nothing. I'm in the meeting, I'm not gonna say nothing. All the black people want to, they're all in there, all the black people that I'm going to be leading, mentoring, Mm -hmm. my first day on the job, start to pass a rule that says no Mexicans or Filipinos can speak anything but English in the hospital. And they're all voting. And I'm, while we're eating our fried chicken, by the way, and I'm sitting there saying, hold on a minute. So I look at my boss, I said, I'm sorry. Excuse me, excuse me, (laughs) excuse me. All I want to say is, I'm here to lead you. I'm here to guide you. I'm here to work with you. I'm here to work with you. We we, we one team. Mm-hmm. But if y'all pass a bill today or a rule today that Mexicans can't speak English, can only speak English, and Filipinos. By the way, the hospital is forty percent Latino mm-hmm. and and forty percent uh, uh, Tagalog speaking Filipino. Mm-hmm. You're going to tell 80% of your constituents that they can no longer speak anything but English. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. When you roll that out, I'm going to be rolling out how to remove you. Mm. So go ahead. Because here's the deal. The power's with the people. Right. So you can go past whatever rules you want. Say it. They did it. They went to management. They sat around the table. And I said to the management, hey, y'all roll this shit out. I'm not supporting it. I'm going to be showing people how to remove it. And you know what I did? I went through that hospital every shift, every day of every of, of the week. And I posted notices on how to recall your steward mm-hmm. and they fucking started removing people left and right and they built a whole new union mm-hmm. so my point is when you get fed up it has to turn from anger to action because mm-hmm. the anger part if you sit in that the consequence will show up at your door and then you'll feel defeated and then you'll be persecuted with the idea with the idealism that you actually were a contributor because mm-hmm. you did nothing right you know if i come to you and say uh you know uh hey nigger you can't sit there and then you the woman that pushed the man off the bus, mm-hmm. everybody that sat on that bus and watched that, you just as guilty as her to me. Mm-hmm. Complacent. Because you didn't involve yourself. Yeah. You didn't do anything. But the con, because they were probably afraid she would do something to him. Mm-hmm. But as a result, this man is dead. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. Well, 
I said it. I, I agree with what you're saying. And, and just to be clear, I am, it's not that I'm pro-abortion. I'm pro-choice. I'm pro, what the fuck do you want to do with the body that you were given? It, 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 we walk around, we are autonomous. No decision that I make has anything to do, with, well, it might have something to do with you guys, especially when we got to work together or something like that, you know, but. No, but when it the, comes to your body, yeah. it's yours. Yeah. It's shit. Period. So I'm nothing just like, to do wait, with us. But there's not even an explanation needed for that. I was, it's the craziest <laughs> no, thing. I was, it's I, the I, craziest no, thing that you have to explain. I just, no, I just really meant like whether or not I choose to show up for work. That it, affects but, you. Uh, <laughs> what happens? <laughs> <laughs> it's a motherfucker that ain't showed up. <laughs> or, you know, like, so anyways, I say all that to say that lawmakers trying to pass, you know, a, a bill and legislation that is trying to control women's bodies. And I, 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 I can't, I can't. I, I, and you I, won't. I fear for young women. I fear for women who don't have the resources or the education to understand how to protect themselves. I just, I fear you know, and it's it, <sighs> women. You create life, period. Mm -hmm. You create life. Yeah. Like you create. It's not a you know, men. We can build the buildings. Women build buildings, too. But 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 women give life to those who build the buildings. So mm -hmm. That's right. I just again, I, I would say if you're a woman, if you're a man, if you're anybody, Everybody. you should support women's right to have con total control over their body. Because the minute y'all come talking about I got to cut my balls off or, or tie some shit up, you know, we have a problem. And then the world will pay attention. That's crazy. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, listen, we've run out of time. This has been a very uh, empowering uh, episode. I loved it. Yeah. I learned a lot. Yeah. I'm All probably right. going to revisit this conversation like next week when I put my thoughts together. But right now I'm just I'm I'm really it's so fresh and so new and I'm still so like you know, raw, exposed nerve about it because I'm I, I'm just so angry and so fearful and I just don't understand. This is 2019, not not 1960, right? I, did I enter into a time warp and didn't no, fucking didn't. know it? So we're going to leave you with some wisdom. Number one, it's a, a woman has a right to choose and total control over her body. And number two, swallowing semen is murder. <laughs> bye. <laughs> oh, God. Bye, everybody. God damn it.